shared this morning that how uh, the sermons the, this week and next week will t- uh, tie in to the subject um, from the book that we use in the Faith Builders, a new converts class, and praise God we have another soul to be added to that number. Um, that uh, the title, Now That I Am a Christian. And uh, we have one lesson left. And as Halo was away, I was leading the, uh, the class in our uh, sharing of, of God's word. And the last chapter of this book deals with Christian living. Okay? And we'll be finishing up that as the Lord's will in the coming weeks. But I got to... Th- to praying and asking God to minister to me to um, uh, ask what he would have me to bring before you. And as I'm reading through this and looking at it, um, the, the Lord uh, brought a piece to me about maybe we should look at some Christian living principles. And so this morning we uh, dealt with Uh, Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 20 that uh, informs us that we live in in Christ by faith, but we live in a body. And that body, which is our flesh, is prone to desires that are contrary to the spirit. And uh, Galatians 5.17 tells us that the flesh and the spirit warreth, lusteth, or uh, have conflict between themselves because the spirit of God wants us to live one way, but the flesh, we want other things, okay? We want to satisfy that. And so tonight, uh, we'll be bringing part two through the book of James, Chapter 1 that Brother Maurice read for us, a familiar set of scriptures that we have uh, read and studied uh, numerous times. I want us to look at James 1, verses 14 and 15 is where our foundation will take place um, tonight. James 1, 14 and 15. We have new life because we are in Jesus Christ, but we also have new battles because we live in a body. We live in Christ and we live in the body at the same time, at the same time. We experience this strange enigma on the one hand, the life in Christ is within us, and on the other hand, this ongoing struggle to deal with those things of the flesh that entice us. And that's what James talks about in verse number 14. Each one, but each one is tempted. But each one is tempted. What does that mean? That means everybody. Okay? No one is exempt from being tempted. That's what James says. Each one, okay, is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Notice the word own. Satan tempts us from that which is already in us that is our own desire which is different from somebody else's. He may not tempt me like he might tempt Halo or Brother Allen or Brother Mark because our own desires are different. So he comes at us based on what our own desires are and builds a game plan to take us down based on what we desire. So knowing that, Okay, Need, helps us to prompt and prepare ourselves 
that the attack is going to come from your own desire. When you think, remember what, remember what Paul says, examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith. That can mean several things, but one of the things it means for sure is this. You better be paying attention to yourself. See, I ain't got time to worry about nobody else. I got too many other issues with me. So I need to know where my weaknesses are, where my desires are, because Satan is coming at that. Okay? Because he don't want to waste his time fooling around with something that he may not be able to entice me with. Okay? This verse is taken from a, 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 a fishing analogy. Okay? Uh, as we go fishing, we use bait to try to lure whatever fish we're trying to get. Okay? Should have brought my tackle box, but I didn't. Okay? Uh, but in my fishing tackle box, that's where all the stuff I need when I go fishing. Okay? All right? I got different lures in the box. What is a lure? Different types of uh, a worm, different type of, of uh, minnow, different sizes, different shapes, different colors to try to entice a certain fish. So if I'm fishing for crappie, okay, then I need a crappie lure because a crappie lure is more likely to attract a, carp, a crappie rather than a worm. Crappies like minnow. So I'm going to either use a large minnow, I mean a, a live minnow, or I'll use a, a artificial minnow at any rate, and I'm going to use that if I'm trying to get crappie. And if I want largemouth bass, I can use live worm for that, or I could use an artificial worm. The point is I have different types of lures to attract different kinds of fish, okay? Catfish eat anything. They don't make nothing with you. Throw it out there. Bah, you get, you get, that, that's just how they are. Okay? But if you're searching for a certain type of fish, you need a certain type of lure. So Satan has a certain type of bait depending on your own desire that he wants to get you with. Are you following me? Okay. So James says everybody is being enticed. satan got a lure for everybody in here. Okay? Everybody. All right? That's what he has based on our own desires. You never grow out of it. If you think this doesn't apply to you, then sin really has you deceived. Because nobody gets away from being tempted. Nobody. Not, my grandma would say, not now one. Okay? You, you ain't getting away. Okay, he coming at you, for you. Okay, no matter how long you've been in the church, uh, how many Bible class you go to, he got a lure for you. Okay, Paul says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that's, that, that's something we need to pay attention to. You don't get to grow out of it, and we've already talked about how this conflict Never ends. So let me ask you a question, okay? What evil desires have tempted you this week, this month, or this year thus far? Now, the first thing people want to think about is some sexual. No, no, no. We'll talk about that, okay? We'll talk about that. What about pride? Anybody got some issues with that? Pride comes before the fall, remember. Don't forget that. That's what Scripture says, okay? All right? What about worry? The Bible says, uh, take no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow's got enough issues of his own, okay? All right? Don't, don't do that. Be anxious for nothing, okay? Philippians 4, 4, Matthew 6, okay? What about bitterness? The Bible does say, 
don't, don't hang out with bitterness. It does say you, you need to be careful about your feelings about other folk. It does say that. Okay. What about laziness? What about, thank you. <laughs> and electric lights. <laughs> okay. See, yeah, we want to get, we want to ask us, yeah, I like got some lust going on. Oh, no, we ain't talking about it. We let like that one go tonight. This other stuff that we don't talk about, okay? What about prayerlessness? Bible says pray without ceasing. Wherever you go, lift up holy hands, 1 Timothy 2, okay? Pray. Well, what about those things that we don't do? Okay. We all are good at identifying the obvious sins in our culture. What about the ones we seldom talk about? Ingratitude. Folk ain't thankful. Folk ain't thankful for and you can't get people to say thank you for save your life. Envy. Anger. Bible says don't judge others. How, how, how good are we at doing that? How bad are we at doing that? Mark talked last week about the sins of the tongue. Y'all didn't forget that, did you, already? Last Sunday night, right? The sins of the tongue, and there are many of them. Okay? All of these things, okay, and based on your own desire. Because if you like to put people in a place with your mouth, then the lure is going to be to get you to, to, to commit sin with the sins of your mouth. The tongue. See, that's your lure if you like that kind of person. Okay? All right? You like to be mad at people all the time, bitter about any little thing. Girl, what's wrong with you? Why are you tripping? Oh, man. Here comes a lure for bitterness to get you. That's how it works. Okay? And we need to be under, we need to understand them. You know, we got we to gotta know and act on this stuff so we can be ready for what Satan's onslaught is. Because he's coming to get everybody. You don't get away. We need to know where sin is active so that we can take action against it. Isn't that right, Brother Allen? For me, I've identified a number in my own life, but I've noticed of late I've been hanging out with self-pity, feeling sorry for myself, and praying to work on that. If you want to pray for Brother Willie, pray that God help him with that so that he can work through it because that's been an issue for me, okay? Something go wrong and you start feeling like you're the only one going through it, you know, uh, and you just, you struggle with it and, and you just, you know, sit down, head drooping and, you know, woe is me and and just kind of working through that, okay? Uh, so that's been one of my issues. Pray for me, amen? Uh, let's look at some stages of how this works. It begins with an evil desire, okay? An evil desire that pulls and entices at your soul, okay? It, it, Satan is after your soul, believe me. It grows, you know, something settles on your mind, like, well, this is what I want. This is what conception means. You just start thinking about it. You haven't done anything yet, but you're just thinking about it. That's, that's the conception of the thought that will lead to a behavior down the road you got to think about it first. And the thought just begins to permeate and grow. Okay? And the conception then is like 
This is a childbirth example now we're dealing with. We're dealing with fish and lure in the other verse. This is a childbirth thing. When a, baby, when a child is conceived, right? And then later they are what? Born. James says, here's what happens. That sinful thought is conceived and then it is born. And when it is born, what does it say? Then when desire is conceived, it gives forth, uh, birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. In other words, this thing just grows and grows. It's like weeds in your yard. If you don't pull them out, they're going to keep growing. Okay? Hey, you got to cut them or pull them all out. If not, it's going to make a mess of your yard. Isn't that right? You got to do something with them weeds. So that's where we are with that. Then sin is born, and when it is born, it has, by definition, its own life. One sin is never an end within itself. Sin then produces death. That is all inside of us. When Jesus lived on this earth... Sin was outside of him, never inside of him. Ever with us, sin is a basis of operation within us. Why? When we became baptized into Christ, Jesus overthrew the battle of sin that it would not have reign over our lives or dominate our lives, but he didn't eradicate it, this presence of sin in our life, didn't take it away, okay? Um, I meant to bring my Teflon skillet and my Velcro hat. Why? Because anybody got them Teflon skillets? You see them things? That you put an egg in there and it just slide all out and you, just, you don't even need a spatula. Just whoop, fall out on your plate, right? All right? Sin is like Velcro. Any, any, one, any of my young boys got a pair of shoes with Velcro snaps on them? Okay, all right. There, Alan's got a pair of shoes. Don't take off your shoes, though. <laughs> but Velcro. And what does Velcro do? It stick. That's what sin does. It's like Velcro. It'll stick on you. It ain't like Teflon where it just slide on it. It just grabs Sister Lois and it just sticks. Just like Velcro. That's what happens. So that's where we're at when it comes to that. I want to give you a couple of verbal illustrations of how Satan entices us. He whispers in our ears about some things. You've heard it. The enticement begins and you hear this whisper and you are in a conflict and the whisper says something, you know, you special. Come on. You got needs. You special like that. Don't nobody got to know. Who going to find out? I'm the only one in here. Okay. Y'all don't get to whisper. Okay. All right. It, it, those kind of things occur. Okay. All right. Uh, 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 uh. And when he told Eve, oh, you won't surely die, he was lying. Okay. Because that was not the truth. And, and he always masked the truth. The whispers are never truthful. So when they come, watch out, because there's an Eve thing coming at you. He's trying to deceive you. What about this one? It's just one time. It's only going to happen once. And you know better to listen to that one, okay? Because once you do it once, what's going to happen? You like it enough to try it again, 
okay? And you keep trying to tell yourself you're not going to get caught up in it, and before you know it, it's years down the road, and you're doing the same thing. Because it's never just once. Never. How about this one? You can fill out a yellow card. It'll be all right. I'm going to turn away on this. Day. Fill out a yellow card. The whisper in your ear. Okay. Anything to kind of get you to rationalize a reason why you should fall for the lure. Okay. Y'all, y'all tracking with me tonight? Okay. All right. All right. And so uh, it, 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 that's what happens. It's no big deal. What harm will it do? Okay? You at home by yourself. Don't nobody know. Who going to find out? That's how it happens. So it grows. It grows. And we need to cut it back. Okay? Pull them weeds out the ground. Cut them down. Okay, here's what a particular battle with sin will look like. It's not that you will no longer be tempted or that you will not fail. But the power of sin that has mastery over you is gradually weakened. Sin has to be weakened so that grace can increase. Right? You're going to always be tempted, but it shouldn't be uh, so strong at you today as it was five, ten years ago. Because you should have been weakening it, making it weaker, so as it still comes at you, you can be, oh, he did that ten years ago, Satan, that's all you got. Because you have weakened that thing that once had mastery over you, that no longer does because you was chopping the weeds down. You were pulling them out the ground every time it came at you so it didn't have the power that it did when it first came. So the weakening of it is important. Uh, turn to Psalm real quick. Let's do, deal, with, deal, deal with a couple things in Psalm. Let's do Psalm 19 real quick and verse number 13. This is one of the Verses we talked about before. Psalmist says, keep back you, you from your servant, also presumptuous sins. Okay? Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. You want a prayer this week? That's a good verse to pray for. Uh, that sin will not have dominion or rule my life. That's weakening it, we weakening the prospect. Look at Psalm 40, verse 12. Let me give you one. This one is going to help us a lot. Psalm 40 and verse number 12. Psalm 40 and 12. This whole chapter, I think Mark's preached on this before. 20, verse number 12. 12. For innumerable evils have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs on my head. Therefore, my heart fails me. Here he has been overtaken. Sin has gotten a grip on him, and his prayer is that, uh, I, 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 I need to get this fixed. I need help here. And we, and, and we have to get to a point where in our conversations with God, we need to be true with him. He knows already anyway, but be honest with God. God, this is too hard for me. This is what I need help with. Please deliver me from this. Unfortunately, we all have seen a person that we thought was a mature Christian 
failed in a public disgrace, failed with moral or sexual scandals, and you were completely taken off guard about what happened. And your comment was, what? I can't believe that happened to him. I don't, I don't understand. Here's what happened. Sin grows. And James says the conception of the thought continues to grow and then is birth. You can't see a child in the, in the, in the, in the womb of a mother unless you have obviously some sonogram things, but you can't see that. You can see the, 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 what, the fact that the mom is pregnant, but you don't know what's going on inside until the birth is coming. In the old days, we didn't know nothing. Okay? Mother got pregnant, and I, I'm praying for a boy. You don't know if you was having a boy or a girl. You didn't know till it was born, right? Sister so Debbie, mom proved to you, you didn't know. Because there's no way to know. But the birth of the child was growing and then was birthed out. Then you discovered, I have a girl. I have a boy. And that's how sin works. You don't see it in the conception of the thought until it is born. And now you see, oh, that's what happened to him. That's what took him out or took her out. And all along you've been walking and talking and praising and singing. And all of a sudden, bam, they're on the news and they're gone. Ministry destroyed, life destroyed, family destroyed because it started with a thought. James says you got to stop that thing. you got to weaken it or it's going to overtake you. And when it does be too hard for you to deal with, grown too, too much, okay? Parents trying to discipline their kids and they're 20 years old. It's too late now. That should have been done two, and when they was two, two days old, two weeks old. You can't be getting no kids saying, ah, I'm going to get you now. I'm going to put you on punishment. I'm going to take my belt. That boy 20 years old. Where was all that before? You got to get that stuff when it starts. Okay? It builds a position behind the scenes. Weeds got to be cut down. Somebody might say, well, it's too late for me. My sinful behavior is overtaking me. And what do I do now? You got to act now. Yeah. It would have been nice if you had acted 10 years ago, 20 years ago, last week. It might have been, it'd have been good if you had done it then, but you didn't. So what do you do now? Start today. Start today. Start today. You start today. Today is the day of salvation. Today when you hear his voice, what? Harden not your heart. Do what needs to be done because God's grace is still, is still sufficient for you today. The trouble against the flesh isn't a short battle. It's a long warfare, never concluded with just one prayer. It's going to be a battle. Let me give you an example. If I thought I was smelling some fumes in my house, and I'm sitting there watching, I don't care what I'm watching, my favorite show, Wicked Tuna and Deadliest Catch. Okay. Yeah, so yeah I, I'm watching them. Okay and uh, Chopped on Food Network, Destination America, them kind of shows. I'm, 
I, I, was, I was kidding with somebody when I said, you know what, if I was dating today, I'd be so boring. I, I never would get married. <laughs> and what are we going to watch, baby? Wicked Tuna, honey. Been, what? <laughs> so, so I wouldn't have no girlfriend or, or no wife because, I, you know, I like, I like them shows. <laughs> you know, so of them kind of thing. And if I'm sitting there watching and I smell something that smell like gas, it wouldn't make sense for me to just keep smelling it. What would make sense is that I get up and check it out. If I see smoke in the house, I uh, wonder what that smoke is. And keep watching my show. I got to go put out, I got to find out where the smoke is at. Where it's coming from. In your life, when the conceptions of thoughts are formulating, you got to stop that stuff now. Because like smoke, it'll turn into fire and you'll be all burned up. In more ways than one, believe it or not. So I, I, I got to go deal with that. Okay? And if I don't, there's going to be a problem. And if you don't, there's going to be a problem. So, got to understand that I've got to do something about it. I've got to stop it. I've got to fix it. Sin that is allowed to grow brings on its own type of death. Sin weakens the soul and darkens the soul. Let me give you one more verse, and we've got to get out of here. My phone's still okay. All right, let's do Psalm 32. Okay, we were in Psalm 40. Do Psalm 32. And boy, this is, this is amazing. This psalm is incredible right here. Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, okay? whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Now watch this. When I kept silent about my sin, my bones grew old. Through my groanings all the day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. What is he saying? He's saying, look, when I hid my sin and didn't deal with it, okay, my strength was zapped from me as in the heat of summer. You ever sit in the sun for a while and you, and you just zapped? Now, no energy. He said, I was exhausted because there was no life in me. He said, I don't have no vitality. Didn't he say that? My vitality was turned into a drought like summer. Sin is like a thick cloud that spreads over your soul and intercepts all the beams of God's love for you. Now, this word Selah, and you see it several times in Psalms in particular, it means think about it. But it has some, some power behind it, okay? So I'm going to try to do it based on what the word really means. My talenty was turned into a drought of summer. Think about that. Think about it. That's how serious it is. That's, that's the energy behind the word, sailor. Think about it. With that kind of force. To allow you to know that this is a serious thing here. And every time you see that word, that's what it means. Now, you don't have to jump up like I did, but you just, I just want you to understand that this is a serious thing is what the psalmist is trying to get. I was just trying to, you know, get you to know this thing is no plaything. I'm done here in another minute. The Lord, the joy of the Lord um, for some of us has uh, 
been reduced or maybe even gone because sin in your life has zapped you of your spiritual energy. 